It's a cool idea. It's good science fiction. But getting to another star system is not trivial. It is reasonable that there is such a thing as a wormhole through interstellar space. But as far as anybody knows, it would kill you because the amount of gravity, the difference, but the gravity between your feet and your head would stretch you into, as the saying goes, a piece of spaghetti. That would, that you'd be dead. But it is charming science fiction. I mean, I grew up on Star Trek. Everybody speaks English. They beam up and down. There's gravity all over the place. Uh, it's good. And to those of us who claim they want to go live on Mars, they want to be pioneers on Mars. Mars is a fantastically hostile place. If you really think you want to live on Mars, go to Antarctica, go to the drive, not the shore where the penguins are jumping and the orcas are snapping, no. Go to where it hasn't rained in over, or snowed in over a century. And just to, make, just to make sure you're in it, take your own scuba tanks to breathe. Don't breathe the air there either. I very much want to go to Mars and come back. I would like to explore Mars with my rock hammer and the right microscope and lenses to look for some microbes. But I want to come back. Do you know the um, motto of the state of California? Oh. Eureka, I found it. So these guys come over the hill, there's orange trees are like weeds. Fish like this, salmon are falling in your lap out of the Sacramento River. It gets to the point where the, the rocks are made of gold. They have a gold rush. I mean, it's out of hand. When you go to Mars, it ain't like that, man. If you open the door, <gasps> you're dead instantly. <laughs> However, if we were to discover evidence of life on Mars, it would change the world. Change the world. There are economic reasons to do it. Maybe you want to mine an asteroid. You want to be tomorrow's first trillionaire. That person is going to be the one who mines asteroids first. These are the nearby targets, but the more distant targets...